This is Piranix Podcast number 47, and today we're talking about F1 porpoising. So if you haven't seen in the 2022 season, there has been this tendency for F1 cars to bounce up and down. And here are some videos showing what it looks like, both from the um, driver's perspective and from just an observer's perspective. So we could see there is that these cars were bumping up and down and this has been a problem because first of all the drivers inside they get tenderized a little bit like lewis hamilton was um, saying not long ago that his back was clean or something and you know you're, you're bouncing up and down all the time for an hour or two you're going to get sore so why does it happen or what first of all, what is it and then why does it happen and how can you fix it that's what we're talking about today so the first reason what is it we just saw those videos then and the reason why this occurs is because on the underside of the vehicle they're using that now to produce downforce so traditionally with all these pictures that you're seeing of f1 cars they typically relied on the add-ons to produce downforce so all these elements all these blades that you see the spoilers they were mainly there to either produce downforce or to direct the flow away from very draggy areas, but also then to produce downforce usually as well. So these objects were located on the top of the car, but this season they decided to allow, um, it, there was a rule change, they decided to allow teams to produce downforce through the underbody. And this isn't the first time that they've done this. They actually started, they actually did this in the eighties as well. They take advantage of something called the venturi effect and the venturi effect effectively indicates says that when you have let's say a, a volume and you have air going through that volume when it reduces in cross-sectional area so it gets smaller the flow has to go faster to go through because you have the same amount of flow going through if the area reduces you need to have more flow more velocity for the flow to get through what happens is the flow speeds up then because it speeds up it drops in pressure and this is a very natural thing to occur because it drops in pressure you have then low velocity you have low pressure on the underside of the vehicle that's what happens here you have higher pressure on the top of the vehicle that then pushes the vehicle down into the ground more and as i mentioned they had this in the 80s a lot and they found that it was very dangerous they actually had some accidents occur of it and the reason why it was so dangerous for them back then was that if they went over a bump then that resulted in the car jumping up a little bit and then all of a sudden you had a lot greater ground clearance that means you have greater area the velocity then reduces suddenly the pressure increases suddenly and then you lose your downforce and then the vehicle can uh, lose control it can even flip over if you're not careful and this did happen to some extent and there was also i think there was even a fatality involved in the 80s i wasn't alive then so i'm not too sure but um <laughs> that that then led to a a change in the the rule so that this wouldn't happen again and it would be safer and then this year they um, modified them again it's not nearly as bad as the 80s but there have been uh, some incidents where drivers have almost lost control and again this is because the underbody is producing all this downforce and uh, when you hit a bump that can affect the height that you're riding above the ground which then increases the area the cross section area increases the velocity drops pressure increases you lose your pressure under you lose your low pressure underneath then that results in a loss in uh, downforce so they mainly see this porpoising in um cornering so when there, there, there are some videos when they're on the straights but there's also mainly in the cornering where they go into the corner this porpoising bouncing up and down occur or also known as moving to the grooving and <laughs> The reason, one reason why this could be is that when you go into a corner, you're braking. 
and when you brake, the car tilts forward a little bit. That then results in the front reducing the area between the reducing the height between the ground and the front of the vehicle, which then reduces the area and starts this venturi effect. So this then really um, exacerbates this problem. So then what happens is you start producing this downforce. The vehicle then gets sucked down to the into the ground closer. It then produces more downforce, which is because the area is smaller, which then sucks the vehicle even closer to the ground. And then this continually happens. And then it gets to a point where the distance between the vehicle's underbody and the ground is so small that the flow chokes. And what this means is that the flow doesn't go through anymore. So it's effectively like what you think is, is choking. That's what the word means. So then what happens is you then get this sudden loss in um, low pressure because the flow is no longer going underneath properly. That then reduces the downforce, which then pushes the car up a little bit. And then once it gets higher, the flow can go through and then it can drop down again. And this happens periodically. And then that's what causes this um, porpoising to occur, this bouncing up and down. So that's what it is. And that's why it happens. How can you change it? How, how can you alleviate it? Because it is not only um, bad for the driver in terms of just tensorizing the driver, it can also result in loss in control, which can be then dangerous, but also it's um, not controllable, which means that it's not um, good for lap times. So overall, this problem occurs for two reasons. One, that there is a venturi effect occurring, but two, it's unstable. So you get to a point where the velocity is the the um, flow as a, is at too low pressure, which then pushes the vehicle into the ground even more, and then it causes that to happen. So you need to have some sort of fail safe so that doesn't happen. One method. Now, before I mention how you can fix these problems, I have to say that I'm not sure if these methods would be exactly okay based on the rules because. First of all, the rules are very complicated. Secondly, the rules change more than I change my underwear. And they will try to change them as much as possible to really take all the fun out of everything. So I think that they would be somewhat okay. At least the ideas might be okay, but I don't really know because they change them so often. But anyway, getting into it, the first way that you could change how much um, porpoising you get is one, just increasing the ride height a little bit. So this ride height occurs because you're able to get so close to the ground that choking occurs. So if you increase the right height just a little bit, you might be able to stop that choking from occurring and then you can reach a stable uh, situation. And that would be based on the suspension. So you get to a point where the suspension is so stiff because you've compressed it so much that it can't go down anymore and any more reduction in um, the height would require a lot of downforce, which, you know, which is not possible. So that's one way to do it, to increase the ride height a little bit so that you take advantage of the suspension that way. Another way you could do, that, do it with suspension is by just making the suspension stiffer. So there are rules based on how um, you, you can't change the actively change the stiffness of the suspension, but like any spring, you can make it um, stiffer as the more you, you compress it and you can actually make it non-linear. And I actually did a podcast that featured a spring that had a similar um, a similar um, change in stiffness in podcast number 44. And what that had was a spring that had a certain stiffness up to a certain deflection. Then it soon, as soon as you hit a certain deflection, the stiffness went out of control. It just got massive, so it couldn't deflect anymore. Something like that could be possible here so that you could stop the porpoising from happening because you're not getting close enough to the ground. So that's two ways that you could do it with the suspension. Now let's look at other ways you could do it with aerodynamics. So this was from a mechanical point of view with the suspension. The other way, another way is looking at it fundamentally. So what happens to this vehicle when it undergoes porpoising? The reason why, it ha why porpoising occurs is because there is too much downforce. So when there's too much downforce, it means that there's so much low pressure in the underbody that you really need to bleed off this low pressure. You need to bleed in more flow to stop this low pressure from happening so that you don't suck to the ground too much. Now, again, in F1 rules, there are, um, there are limitations on how, on moving parts. So you can't really move parts too much depending on where they are. But one method that you could do if they allow small moving parts is you just have a bleeding section in the underbody. So you have 
let's say at some point where the low pressure is worst, you can have just a little um, plate on on the side or something that when the pressure gets so high, it then detaches, it's perhaps spring loaded or um, magnetically connected. It doesn't really matter, just one way. So when the pressure is so high, so low, it um, forces this latch to suck out, which then allows higher pressure air to bleed in and stabilize the vehicle. And then when it gets to a high enough pressure, obviously the the um, low pressure on the actual plate now that has deflected is no longer the same. So then the spring pushes it back into place. Now, is this an active flow control device? It's arguable. It um, doesn't have a feedback, really, if you um, think about it electronically, but it depends on the rules. So that's one way that you could um, do it from an aerodynamics point of view. Another way is perhaps the orientation of the actual vehicle. So if you want to change the orientation, you can then perhaps change the cross-sectional area at the point where the vehicle is experiencing the lowest pressure. That way you can stop this low pressure from forming. So tilting the vehicle up or down, depending on where this low pressure is, or perhaps contouring the underbody a little bit so that you provide a little bit more area at this point, at this local um, low, that then would reduce how much this uh, vehicle is producing downforce and stop this bulbousing from happening. So there's some ways that you could that you could um, fix this problem. If you've thought of any ways yourself, I'd be interested to know in the comments. So let me know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast. That's the end of this podcast. Make sure to check out the other podcasts we have. We have the other F1 podcast. We did one in uh, podcast number 42. We have other ones coming up as well. So I'll see you in the next podcast. Peace out.